lightweight division title. All right, here he is, the number one lightweight contender making his way to the octagon and looking to lead as the new undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world. He has bided his time, waiting for this title shot. He's got the winning streak. He has the quality of opposition. Now he's fighting the number one guy in the world. He believes he's the best. Now his opportunity to prove it just a few minutes away. Well, in a division as talented as 155 pounds, it is absolutely remarkable what this man has accomplished. Here he is, folks, the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world. Now, his goals, far more lofty than that. The title defenses are starting to pile up, but he believes with this type of challenger that has some momentum with fight fans, if he can dust this guy here tonight, he can take his career to the next level and start to be mentioned with the GOATs, the Hall of Fame types. For now, he'll have to settle for UFC lightweight champion. We will see how it goes for him tonight, Vince. And now our tail of the tape for this lightweight scrap. So three years the gap in age between these two fighters with similar height and reach. Now for the official introductions, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas! It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Lightweight Championship of the World! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner! This man is a Muay Thai fighter, holding a professional record of 12 wins, one loss. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Presenting the challenger, Rafael Adamant Pizziam! And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 30 wins, seven losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world, Eddie Alvarez. UFC belt on the line, protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. So we've got two classically trained strikers here. Any chance this fight actually goes to the ground? This fight does not go to the ground. This one will be fought in the pocket. Two guys will stand in front of each other. They will trade punches. They will trade kicks. It's going to be a classic matchup that you normally see inside of a ring. We get it in the octagon. Man, he's timing his shots nicely. It's like Tom Brady out there. He hasn't missed the target. I mean, you insist on bringing in Tom Brady. Stop it. John, stop it. Alvarez gets caught with that punch. Not the easiest guy in the world to hit, but he got caught there. 
Rock'em, shock him out of the shoot here. Oh, setting up the left hook, but out of range. Well, it looked like that knee to the body might have landed. Instead, it is blocked by Eddie Alvarez. Oh, man, how is he standing? Brutal knee to the body. Landed a good uppercut there. and staying pretty busy here on the feet. He's being busy, but it's also the timing and the accuracy that's allowing him to land so many attacks. Beautiful takedown into the land. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. And they both stand up. Alvarez gets caught with that punch. His chin is held up thus far. Got to show up the defense here, though. And both guys really throwing with authority. Oh, that's a beautiful kick right there. I don't know if you've ever been kicked by a mule. Probably feels something like that. It has to. This guy is landing his kick with so much force. Big body kick. This is exactly what he needed to get a takedown and secure the position. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here, just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Five minutes in the books. Hey, stop! Listen, I need you to go out there and I want you to do more of that. And set up those takedowns with your strike. All right, now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. A lot to like on both sides, really. I mean, both were intent on going forward. And what happens when nobody wants to take a step back? They meet in the middle. That's exactly what they did, and they both found success over the course of that round. All right, here we go, DC. Our next round is underway, and he's chasing some punch stat records tonight. That was some serious volume and efficiency in the previous round. Normally, you see that as boxing where a guy just throws so many strikes. But this man has taken it to the octagon, looking to break all the punch records before the night is over. Oh, spinning back this. He didn't telegraph that one at all. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? There's no tell on that leg kick. Alvarez's strike there is blocked. Nice job by the defense. Entry as he secures the double leg takedown. All right, we'll see if he postures up and can get some of his ground strikes going here. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Good series of strikes by him there. Great job of mixing it up, staying active, keeping busy, doing great work. All right, he engages in a single. Yeah, looks like he's wobbly on his feet. What a fantastic strike. Oh! shot like that to stay standing shows and talks to your toughness. Well, he was a little bit lackluster in round one. You can't say the same here in this second round. He has really picked up the pace, an uptick in the aggression and the output, and starting to find his range here in the pocket. Well, no surprises. He connects once again, and that looked like it landed right on that. Right on the cut, and he's targeting it, right? He's looking. You can see him almost putting a laser beat on that cut and just putting his hands on it. It doesn't take much. He's just keep making his split, showing his opponent that he has no mercy. Lands with the kick there. That one appeared to stun him. He needs to 
hard look at the finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Big call. Oh! Oh! This might be the biggest shot of this entire fight. He lands a massive look to put his opponent on wobbly legs. Oh, wow. Oh! Oh, how about this as he jumps to side mount to try to counter the guillotine with a Von Flu choke. Ovin St. Flu would be proud. it done by submission tonight, champ. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. He's so skilled, he's so tricky, and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. So there is the man they are all chasing at 155 pounds, the undisputed UFC lightweight champion. And how about the way he got it done tonight? A spectacular submission to finish the job. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine has gone to stop in this contest. At four minutes, 14 seconds of round number two. For the winner by submission, and still! So there he is, the still UFC lightweight champion of the world. A lot of steam here during fight week that maybe there were a few things that could plague him tonight. Looked as good as ever for my money. He looked as good as he's ever looked inside the octagon. He's so good at everything, every single skill that you need to become champ. He has mastered, and he showed it in this fight.